You're listening to Until They Sleep, a podcast where two parents finally get to sit down and discuss all the different things that run through their heads every day because their four kids are finally asleep. Thanks for listening. And welcome back to Until They Sleep. This is Chantel, and I'm here with my husband. What's up, everybody? Daniel. The one and only. Yes. The D. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you guys got to listen to the last episode where it was a book club meeting. Uh, my my book club meeting with my lady friends where we covered the book Lessons in Chemistry. And we said in that one, uh, in the introduction on that one, that we were going to be covering it. My husband and I were going to be covering Lessons in Chemistry so we could get a male perspective on this book. Um, and so that's what this one's going to be about, honey. I will be sensitive to your needs. Uh, okay. It's that major pain. <laughs> So, again, for anybody who hasn't didn't listen to the previous episode or who is unaware, Lessons in Chemistry is a book by Bonnie Garmus. It was a New York bestseller a couple years ago, and it's actually uh, it was available. I don't know if it still is on Apple TV, um, and it's different. So, just FYI, you know, like most things, the TV show or movie is usually different than the book so if you have seen the show I would highly recommend reading the book so you could get a different perspective or some different information than is provided in just the show so honey what did you think about this book or do you have anything you want to say before we get into it um well uh I feel like I'm I'm the guest here so uh no, let's just go with the pouches and let me know what you think. Uh, oh, you're supposed to let me know what you think. So, so overall, um, I did enjoy the book, actually. So I watched, uh, I know you covered it before, but I, uh, we watched the show. And by the time we watched the show, my wife had already read the book. So then I watched the show and then I did the audible afterwards. Um, I can understand now why you were like, oh, in the book, this was different. In the book, that was different. In the book... But like we always say, you know, uh, TV shows, movies of books are always going to be different and we're always going to complain about something. Usually when you watch something and then you go to the book, you're like, okay, cool. Uh, The book was better. And if you do the book first and then you go to the show, you really hate the show or the TV Mm -hmm. or the movie. And and but you're like more angry about it, Uh, I guess, because you get more in in touch with it. So. (laughs) Because the, the book you've you've read, what the, it's supposed to be, you know, it's it's not like a script that was turned into a book. You know? The the thing that I like sometimes about the books when I watch them, like TV shows or movies, you know how they describe stuff in the background, like what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're smelling, like like. So that kind of always kind of for me helps me out on the shows or or movies. Okay. Uh, on the live action, I'm just gonna refer to it as live action. Because you're seeing the scenes and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember who he's describing, you know, like the smell of, you know, burning wood and the cold wind coming in. And, you know, like, but in the movie, it's just go so, and, and, and live action, it's just go so fast. It's like you, those, those small little details that you don't take into consideration, you know, they get kind of bypassed. Okay. So it's nice to have that so the, already. The book, you, you enjoy the description in the book. Yeah, 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 because they go into emotions, you know, or thoughts, or what they're what's going through their mind at the moment, you know, and mm-hmm. and 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 in the live action, you don't, you just it's a scene, you know, you don't you don't know what happens until the dialogue starts. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, I know that this book wasn't geared for men, but in your experience, is there anything about this book that is relatable to your life? Relatable to my life. Yes. <laughs> like at work or I, I can, people you've known growing up. I, I guess I can say, yeah, it's relatable in life because, uh, I mean, who hasn't seen a woman, you know, be talked down to or humiliated or, you know, crude jokes around them just to make them feel awkward? I think we've all seen it or experienced it at least, you know, or once. Or done it. Yeah, in, in our lives, yeah. So, uh 
so yeah, uh, I guess in a way, it, it makes me kind of think about my mom and and some of the shit she went through, you know, because I remember, um, I remember, you know, the cat calls. I remember, you know, the the advances and the comments by man, um, the treatment, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, I have sisters, I have stepmoms, I have daughters, you know, I have a wife, well. Uh, friends cousins you know they're all female so it makes you think differently like yeah i guess I, go you know. ahead don't censor yourself no 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 it's like <laughs> I, i'm trying to put the words into it. It, it, it it's not that you know it's like oh yeah you know um i mean joining the whole woman movement thing yeah you know, it's not about honesty, that but it is crazy there's like, nothing feminist about you <laughs> no 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 so. but but no but but that's i mean that's the perception of me i think uh, that you're a feminist? No, that I'm not feminist. You yeah. know that I'm like very macho or whatever. Not when I'm when I'm not. I'm I'm really not. I was raised to be like that. It's part of my upbringing and my culture, I guess, in a way. But I've I don't think I've ever been like that. Um, like what? Like, like a some ma- of the like characters? a machista? No, like just a machista. You know, like I have things that in a way I can think or act or be machista but i don't think like i'm like a hardcore machista to that time i I, like what's described in the book yeah like what's in the book yeah exactly you know um okay all right because i have a different love and and respect for for women like i i'm not a uh i have a hard time saying the word misogynistic person a misogynist yeah i'm not a misogynist I, i don't hate women i don't you know i don't put them down like that or or demean them like that you know so uh, I I, I definitely have like to say to joke about it. Well, yeah, the, the jokes are jokes, but between just like on a download, not out in public, or doing it to you know people that barely know me. Yeah. You know, so yeah, uh, but well, I, I I guess I answered your question. You know. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to just ask you the same questions that we covered in the on the on your book club on the thing. Book club. On yeah. That, on that. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Just to see what your take on. The same question. I still haven't listened to it, uh, everyone. So uh, I'll, I'll go back and listen uh, to my answers, and uh, or what, what same time you guys doing, and then I'll see how far off I was. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, one of the questions was: Would you consider Elizabeth's need to be accepted as she is a product of how she was raised? No, a product of how she was raised. Yeah. So do you remember? Wait, who but her what was the what, what was the first the first part you said? How did you start? That her need to be accepted. Need to be accepted? No, I don't think she actually cared, gave a damn if people were accepted or no. Like in her mind, she was a chemist and she was there to do a job, and her job was to be you know the research and the work. To her, there was no sexist. To her, she was trying to do the job. She's trying. She's a scientist, so it's all about X's and and O's and and. You know, pi and square roots and everything. It's just, you know, chemicals and physics and everything. So it, her mind is all, it's just a one language, you know. It's like that the culture was to be scientists. Mm-hmm. You know how some people say, like, race or whatever. Not scientists are like their own little clique, right? Their own little group. So it was like, in her mind, she was a scientist and she just started to do the same work that anybody else could do, but better. She knew she was better. She knew she was smarter. She knew what she, the people that she was working around with. We all do. We all judge the people around us. We know they're limits and what they're capable of doing or not she was actually capable to do that and beyond right do you think okay so thinking about the time that this book takes place in and the reality for a lot of women in those times was it fair did she because she says a lot i mean there's a lot of things that happen in the book where she's very adamant about her need to distinguish herself from others right because she knows what happens to women right she knows that it's, it's taken their work gets taken away their credit is taken away or gets covered up or they're just like an additional name but the main title goes to the main scientist right when it's not it's it's their work and their research so she wants it to be equal she believes that it should have been equal because they're scientists mm-hmm. but society was different the way that they did things was different and that's why she was always very clear what she wanted right she just didn't want to be a supporting factor she wanted to be the main factor she wanted to get the recognition but again back to the question do you think that that had to do with how she was raised no because her parents were scam artists basically they were religious scammers 
Oh, okay, I see where you're uh, you going know, with it. So you need that she was going to get scammed out. Well, no. Do you think that that living a life of lies made her have to be truthful? Or as some other people have discussed, that maybe she was a little autistic? I totally completely don't like that, and I disagree with being autistic. I know that I, I'm not the smartest person in the world. And yeah, you know, I don't have the facts for autism and what would people deal with or have worked with people with autism. But to me, I don't think she was autistic. I think that it's very few people in the world that find something that they love and intrigues them and makes them think. And it's like their passion. So if she found that to be science, uh, right? she's a biochemist. She's a chemist. A chemist, right? So chemistry yeah, was, yeah. So that was that was her thing. That was her drive. That's what drove her. That's what brought her at peace. That's what made her think. That's what she connected it. She connected it with other things in life, right? So that was her her thing. It's like so some people might be podcasting and they become obsessed with it. You know, some people might be yeah, doing research about random stuff. Uh, some people might be insects. Some people might be. I don't know, animals or being a dog trainer or being an actor and they go to the depths of it. You know, they watch old movies and they go to plays like it's everybody has a photography, right? They try out all the different cameras. They do all the research. They, they write up. So if that makes you autistic, that's why I'm like, I, I kind of disagree with it. It, it. Like you're right. It did make me think about Bones, like her, like how she's passionate and it, she's a scientist. So it's all facts you know it's all like the research is there it's just doing the research and the the results of all the data taken so but uh, that's how i just look at it. it's just a, somebody that was very passionate on their craft okay so so to you she's just passionate and loves what she does she, yeah it, it's it's it has her nothing life to do with somebody who's on the spectrum of, right of, of autism right no yeah because like think about it like all the crap, she knows all the crap that's happening around her. She knows all the stuff that's being said about her. She sees how she's being treated. But, you know, that's what, she, but the work is what she did it for. She's like, it's worth it. I'll put up with it. It's not worth it, but it's like, I'll put up with it because I'm getting to do this. You know, I get to get this done. I get to do what I love. That's why I think and later on when she's at home and she's you know loses her job and everything like what's the first thing she does like where can i work like that where have i worked outside of work where i can do my chemistry oh the kitchen where i cook because to her even cooking was a science everything was precise measurements temperatures time uh you know she took everything in consideration so she's like this is my my laugh when i'm at home and then there's the laugh at work now i don't have a workplace but this has been my life, so I can do both things here. I can do my science, and I can do my cooking science here. Okay. So that's why she turned her kitchen into a lab. Okay, good point. Yeah, so yeah. to her, it's just, I mean. Okay. That's how much that's... she loves that. You know, it's it's a part of her being, of, of, of her core. of a, It's just, you know, it's so, and again, her to, piece. To you, it's just something she loves, and. But what about she was always reading, right? She was also always read. She always made her notes. She always did. She yeah, did yeah. even the rowing. The later on, the rowing, you know, like concentration. She starts learning about how do I adapt to this, how to adapt to that, like how do I. Do it? And when she's learning, she's like, oh, it's all geometry, right? Okay. Or physics. What was it? What, what, what was it's he physics. saying? Right. And so she starts reading a book about physics, so that he, he so that she can understand what he's trying to teach her. And then within the first chapter, it's like, okay, I can I can see why he said that. And then by the okay, end of so it. so that's something that. Right, but it telling. was something that she didn't know anything about. So sometimes we correlate things to that. We find a familiarity, right? Okay. That makes it feel more comfortable. Well, like, I don't know a lot about, you know, I didn't know a lot about, let's say, part of my work field. But I automatically try to relate it to um, vehicle engine. Uh, internal combustion engine mm -hmm. you know i'm like okay i got the intake here and then we have the compression we have this you know and then we have you know this you know exhaust and we, you know what you know what i mean like okay. i always end up going that route because go, it's what i learned it's what, what I you know to understand how other things work right. so i mean that can lead into the next question which is why do you think she chose chemistry as a career and would she have been good at anything else 
Well, she showed that she's good at anything else. She showed that she was a great host. She showed okay. that she was a great cook. She but showed that she was a great human being at the why end. Why don't you, to you know her. think she chose one of those careers? Why? Why chemistry? That was her thing, though. That was because I think because of her parents being scum artists when it came to religion. Mm -hmm. So what's the other spectrum of that religion? It's going to be science, right? Yeah. We true. always have that fight about people that are so devoted to fate and God. And then the scientists who are always like, no, this is a logical explanation. The research is here to what you're believing. Mm -hmm. It's not a miracle. It's science. Mm -hmm. So then she went. Most kids always rebel against their parents and do the complete 180 of what they love, right? This is true. I love football. Well, no, I don't like sports. <laughs> You know, I am a Marine. Oh, well, hell no. I'm not joining the Marines. I'm joining the Army, you know? Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, you know you've lived this. Yeah, uh, I'm a Charger fan. No, I'm a Raider fan. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things. I love the Lakers. Well, I love the Clippers. It's, you know, everybody always tests the, the, the opposite of it. I love the it. Kings. I love the Sharks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's too, that was a low blow. <laughs> That was a little blind. I mean, that's not. That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my so, son's a sharks fan. So people. you think it's more of natural, it was a, rebe a natural rebellion? Yeah, without knowing it, she was like, "How? Can, like, she grew up. This was her life as a kid." I'm sorry, uh -huh. yeah, I went off the, the spectrum there. Uh, this is her parents were religious people that that scanned people for their fate for believing they that, were liars. that yeah that that praying and and you know giving money to the church was going to send them and they were going to become one of God's favorites and she you know obviously grew up hating the religion because of as a, as a connection to her parents so how can you prove that your parents were wrong in everything they have taught you and that you grew up on mm -hmm. oh well science science is and then she finds out out of that that it's like wow Okay, I can understand that. Well, I really like that. Do you think well, it had anything to do with her brother? I, you know, I don't think so. I, but you know, because I was also thinking like, like sometimes, like you were saying, idiot savants, right? There are things that just become too easy, and it's just boring and plain. And then when you find something that's hard and challenging, like it pushes you to to try to understand it why and how does it work and i think maybe that's what science did to her i put it at ease and it make her think and because it was so hard it will make her think about those traumas about those those bad things in her early life like her brother and her parents well because she taught herself right she would spend hours in the library right. teaching herself her parents didn't care where she was um, and her brother's the one who took care of her. Right. And so, and the brother was, yeah, and I could be confusing this between the book and the, and the show, right? But her brother always seemed to, to be that, that love and support. Yes. The whole, like, if you want to learn about that, go for it. Like, yeah. if it makes you happy and you want to do it, do it. And it was more because during that time, of course, we're talking about like now the thirties or forties, right? When she was a little girl. Yeah. Uh, and her brother being gay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously that was a really bad thing back then. Yeah. And so he had to keep it hushed, especially with the whole religion thing. Yeah. So then he couldn't express his feelings or be free. So that's why he was with her. Like, this is science. It's not a bad thing. It's not as bad as mine. So why wouldn't you go about it when it's out there for you to learn and read and, 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 and embrace it? Mm -hmm. So I guess in a way she the brother did have that influence because since he died at a young age, she was kind of like in a way living by curiously, like making goals for him. Like if I can succeed, he's succeeding with me. Okay. That's a very different take than I've heard. So, okay. All right. Let me see. Why do you think, and we're going to jump to, why do you think that they worked? Like this. You mean uh, like her? As a relationship. So she Elizabeth meets Calvin. Zott and right, Calvin. So she meets Calvin. It's so funny. I cannot stop saying Elizabeth Sott. It's like <laughs> Elizabeth Sott. And and so she meets Calvin. Right. Right at Hastings, where she's working, and he originally thinks she's just a secretary. Mm-hmm. Um, but once he finds out she's smart, right, he's now attracted to her. Why? Why do you think that they worked? Like, what was this chemistry between them? They had the perfect chemistry. Yeah. Like completely. Oh how God. so? From like, a guy's point of view, how so? Well, I mean, so yeah, at first it was a rough introduction, right? Yeah. Uh, like you said, he thought she was a 
a, a, a secretary, so he refers to her in, in, a, in a way that you know he can be. He was frustrated because there was nobody, anybody at his level. Nobody could ever be as smart as him. That's why he always worked by himself. That's why he had his own side, you know, his own lab. And nobody messed with his stuff, right? Mm-hmm. That's why he was like the prima donna of this area. So he was an he was like her though in a lot of ways. Exactly, like, but they didn't know each other. So yeah. of course he's not gonna think like, oh well, maybe I should talk to this person like they're my equals because in the whole whatever 20, 30 years of my life, I've never found anybody to be my equal. So why would I just start now? Especially of the opposite side. Right. So when, you know, so he talks to her like that, she gets uh, upset about it and, and lets him know that, you know, that she's also a scientist or whatever. Not. Uh, and then later on, you know, like as they get to, and that's most things, right? Sometimes first impressions go a long way. And sometimes we just, that's it. We close the book on people and that's it. And it's the first impression. We're done. Like mm-hmm. we were not willing to give them another chance, right? Yeah. And so it's like when you first met me, like I, you probably hated me the same way that she hated him you know and then, yeah but he was rude to her you weren't rude to me I, I think it was kind of rude of me to be like that yeah most definitely well i mean yes it was kind of rude of you to be that way but right. you weren't but you weren't mean you know you weren't being mean you were just being full of yourself <laughs> <not> <laughs> I <right>. guess. <laughs> so uh and i'm just being myself uh but um so so you know they got to talk they got to know each other and they realized they had things in common Mm-hmm. And so that was a connection. They were both scientists, so that chemistry there was existing. the 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 way that they spoke to each other, the the way they rationalized things, um, they were on the same wavelength. You know, like if you want to look at it that way. So that chemistry within the wavelength was was there. Um, the love, you know, the love that they 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 grew that bloomed out of of both of them. You know, okay. like the chemistry was there. The sexual drive between them was there. Like. You know, they weren't the trust between them. You know, how slowly they started telling each other things, how how they could, you know, adapt to one another and work with one another, like, in a way that they've never found with other people. So they can work together. They can live together. All that time being spent together. And, and it, it was fine. The only differences were, well, you know, like, where they stood when it came to family. Mm-hmm. Well, and based based on those differences for the example of family, because clearly Cal- Calvin wanted more and he wanted to marry her. Yeah. And do you think that based on how much more it seemed that he loved her, that it would have worked out? Like if 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 what happened to Calvin hadn't happened, would it have worked out? Would well, they yeah. have stayed together? Oh no, most definitely. I mean, it would have been it would have been a shorter book, and it would have been over. <laughs> uh, because definitely, like I said, the chemistry was perfect between them. Yeah. Like there was everything that everybody wants, you know, like that best friend, the lover, the soulmate, the even though companion, she didn't want to get worker. married, even though she didn't want to have a family. Ex- exactly. But that was that's okay. So in that aspect, is one of these like so they were per- like I was saying they were perfect in chemistry. Everything Everything was fine. Uh, the difference here was, you know, she didn't want a family and she didn't want to get married because of society. How they see things, how they do things. She didn't want to take his last name. Like, she's not a property. And then a scientist, she's like, I'm going to be discredited now because it's going to be your last name instead of my last name. So in a way, it's kind of like a proof to her parents in case they ever saw her again or read about her. It'll be her name. And they'll see like, look what I did without you. And the moment that she becomes somebody else's wife, like somebody's wife, and they had take their last name, it's like, look what I became because of them. So that was, I can see her point of view on that one. She made good points on that. Well, but for, as a man, how how are you okay with that? Because I remember when we got married, <laughs> and I hyphenated my last name. You had a fit. So, no, I wasn't a fade. I was t- surprised. I, I wasn't expecting that. But hold on, we're not talking about us. <laughs> we can go back to that one. But, but I think you're over reading it. This. I wasn't a, that a pissed off. Okay, I, it wasn't a big. It did honestly. It didn't matter to me. But it's part I, of it the told same... me a lot about like how you saw okay. me. Okay. But we're different times. But let me go back. I haven't answered the other things. So we'll go back to this in a little bit because I don't want to lose my train of thought. You okay. keep on making me lose it. Go ahead. So you were saying about that, right? But then my my point on this where I was I've been trying to get to is this. 
it's a common thing. It happens everywhere. She come. She came from a broken family. She came from an abusive dad and a whatever, and a bitchy mom, and a brother who you know killed himself, and and so she freaking hated her family and everything. And he didn't have a family. He grew up in an orphanage, so his dream was always to have his own family. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. It yes, does. it does, right? Because I've also been through that. I've never had an actual family. I have like people in my life but you know i always wanted a family a family of my own not from bouncing from house to house or half brothers or step brothers or stepsisters or you know fake faces or fake family so i also came you know i grew up with nothing because my mom died when i was a little kid so i always wanted a family i told you this and so those you were identify our fi- with Calvin, definitely and we you had arguments about this also in the beginning of our relationship because you were like um well, we can't have kids, so we shouldn't have kids and whatever. And I was like, well, we can try. There's things we can adopt. You know, it's like, I want to have kids. I want to have families. You're like, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. And then later on, we had our son. And then I was like, let's have another one. You know, let's have more kids. Let's have a whole bunch of kids. Like, I, I always wanted a big house. One day I'm going to be old and I want our house to be loud and crazy with all our kids together and their friends having a good time. And then eventually grandkids and everything. You're like, no. No, well, forget about that. And then at the same time, you're like, remember when we talked about marriage? It's like, oh, well, why do we have to get married? Like, we're just fine the way we are. And at the same time, we're like, yeah, you're right. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't get married. Like, I kind of agreed. But at the same time, I was like, no, I, I want to be married because I know you're the person I, I want to grow old with. You know, it's like, I know I love you. I know, you know, when when we're old and wrinkly and I want to sit and rock the chairs looking at the sunset or the sunrise or you know, go on a little walks or whatever. Like, so I, I kind of, yeah, I definitely, I could relate with Calvin in a lot of things. I, I agree with Calvin in a lot of things. So it was heart wrenching that and, and heart, and I brought my heart broke, you know, and, you know, the whole ring thing and, and her saying no and why, but her points were also kind of valid during that time and era, like uh-huh. as a scientist, get because I, I she wanted see. to be, yeah, she wanted to and, be acknowledged for her work. Yeah, but then you know, there's a lot of people that have been together forever and they've never gotten married. So, and yeah. they're happy. You know, they're fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you think it would have worked? Yeah. Um, and now your whole he- last name hyphenation and everything. So, because <laughs> I don't want people to think or you to think that I avoided it, because I'm I'm not. So I was shocked because we, yeah we got married and I thought you were gonna take my last name. Uh, that was uh, that that was. When, when you started writing it down and everything, I was like, oh, she's practicing my, you know, she's going to be, okay, cool. Like, she's going to be my wife. Like, she's taking my lesson. Well, that's, that's lovely, right? Uh, the traditional thing. I mean, it's a traditional thing. Like, 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 I thought about it. Just like I called your dad and I met with him to ask for your hand in marriage. That's traditional. People don't do that anymore, but I did that. So in a lot of ways, yeah, I'm, I'm very traditional. And I'm, I guess if that makes me a machista, then I guess I'm a machista for doing things like that, for having the respect for towards your father and doing things the, the, the right way. I mean, technically, I shouldn't have to because, you know, we were both already divorced and you were divorced, so there's no point for me to do that. But I wanted to do things the right way because because for me, you were the one and, and that was it. I, I wasn't going to, you know what I mean? I, I just see you okay. being the one person for me for the rest of my life. So I wanted to do things right. I just so it, when I hyphenated my name. So when you hyphenated your name, it got me off guard, and I was like, "What the hell?" Uh, but when I saw it, I, I I understood it. Okay. When I saw it, you know, you told me, and I, it wasn't tracking. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I was like, "What the hell?" No, like you were, because I had seen you practice like. Practice your signature with my like your your first name and and my last name and everything and I was like oh, uh, I like I, I you know I don't know I like just so fine yeah know, writing in their journals yeah and I was like okay cool and but then all of a sudden you tell me like oh no um it's not it's not that I just hyphenated it. and I was like what the what like why the it, hell would you do and that so this is me relating to Ms. Zot right because I. Because of my family's history, I didn't want to lose that name by getting married. Exactly. And that's why I mean, once I saw him. Identity. Yeah. Once I saw it, I was like, okay. 
I see it. Like I, I understand. I understand exactly because of that. Because I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. I understand. Because we were really into the whole last names and, and genealogy, uh, genealogy, and, yeah. and that was the beginning of it. So I was like, I, I respected it, and I was like, all right, that's fine. But I make fun of it till this day, you know. Oh, because I'm there, well aware. Because there's times when you're like, oh, I was like, no, 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 that's not your name. Like, sign it right. Like, you hyphenated my last name. There better be something else before that. You can't just say you're that. Because now I'm like, we get a divorce. Maybe the next one won't hyphenate it. I'm not getting married again. <laughs> I would. I want to do this to myself again. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking oh, about me. Oh, you. Okay. I said, yeah, who want to hyphenate my name? Oh, okay. I, my bad. Why would you want to do this again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So based on what great chemistry they had and, and, you know, going back to the book, why do you think the author chose to kill him off? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Based on how how great they were together, why do you think the author chose to kill Calvin off? Because she's a bitch, man. Like Who? the author, <laughs> like you can't have a happy ending. They have to get something to get you. You know, it's a women's book, man. They have to make you cry. You know, yeah, they got to okay. give you that lo- that lost love. You know, the what if? Uh-huh. Like women love to live in the what if. So if you want to write a good book for women. That's a good point. You know, put the what if in there. Like, what if he would have stayed alive? What if this? What if that? You know, what if they would have got married? I mean, I think they would have got married because she was pregnant and he didn't know. So those are the things I feel bad for Calvin. He got robbed, you know, that the whole daughter thing, and raising his daughter and meeting the pimp. And, and, honest, and honestly, the way I was thinking about it um, as I was going through the book was like the main character is Calvin. Like okay. the 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 core, the root, the tree, the main tree of this story is Calvin, because without Calvin, none of these characters matter. No, okay. none of these characters come together or okay. work together okay. or you know in intertwine with one another. So Calvin's the main thing, and it's beautiful to think that one person can have an effect on so many people, and it's one person that has no friends, has nothing in his life. Or he believes he's no one in life, that he has nothing until she's a part of his life and he's happy and he finds a purpose in life, right? And he's starting to to have that one soulmate and then it comes to an end and it's done. And we're thinking, oh, man, what if he would have met his daughter? What if they would have gotten married? What if he would have seen that, you know, the neighbor ended up being happy at the end? What if he would have seen... Who that guy that he blamed was his dad, but wasn't his dad? Like, what? How would he have changed? No more grudges. What? If, what if he would have actually met his mom and understood why she wrote those letters and why things happened the way that they happened? Mm-hmm. And then because of of Elizabeth, he would have understood his mom more or what yeah. she went through. Okay, it would have made things easier to understand and not so be so so hateful and grudgeful. He would have been like, that makes sense. That makes sense, right? Okay. So it would have been an anchor. But at the end, like you think about it, it's all Calvin. Calvin made it all happen. Okay. So well, since we touched on Calvin's mom, why do you think that she waited? Well, not even waited. Why do you think she never came to look for him? Like, why didn't she physically present her? Because she sent letters. So she knew where he was, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be getting letters. So why didn't she ever Fear. physically show up? Fear. Fear. It's that fear. Because you got to think about it. She even says it, right? She's been lied to her whole life about her son. Like, period. From her parents, from her doctors, from the The priest, from the college, from everything. And so the reason that she found out her son was actually alive was because, you know, he ended up being on a piece of paper. Yeah, on a magazine. And so that made her like, okay, like he... Like she said, she had private eyes and everything. But the same reason why she always had that lawyer, because she was a woman. So her point of view didn't really matter to society or to anyone. And no matter how much money you had, like she still needed her lawyer to sign things and be a part of it. Right. Yeah. She was like the, her treasurer or whatever. Like if she ever married, she even said it. If she ever married, it will go. The power of attorney will go over to her husband, to her husband. Like we're talking about. All that family fortune that she inherited, it was yeah. controlled still by her dead family 
that the lawyer had to be a part of it. A man had to be a part of it, right? That firm. Yeah. yeah. So then she's also kind of like, well, I'm afraid. Like, how I've been judged my whole life for being a young mother and I'm wet, even though the dad passed away, right? He probably would have married her too. Mm-hmm. You know, they told her that and then the baby died and, and everything. Then she sees this article or she's wondering, she hears about it because some nurse calls her and tells her and she gets the hope and she's trying to find out before she gets her heart broken, right? Before she gets her heart, her hopes up, I'm sorry, and goes to try to meet this kid. She wants to make sure that it's him. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, it's him, but he's dead. Oh, you know, oh, the, you know, so then that sadness, then he's a grown up. And there he is again. But he's a grown up. And we all know that when you're a grown up and you go your whole life thinking one thing, man, do this. We give one outcome so many different damn backstories and we make it more complicated and we and and he even said it and like and that's one of the things about him he holds on to grudges Mm -hmm. and it was well known and so she had her lawyer and he's heard this all along so of course she's gonna be afraid she's gonna be afraid that her son's was gonna hold a grudge against her like wait you've been alive my whole life and you're now just trying to find me like you're now just trying to reach out to me because you saw me in a magazine like all these other fake relatives so i don't blame him for being kind of safe because like you said a lot of people out of nowhere started you know coming out and trying to blackmail him and asking for money and women saying that they had his baby when he was like dude i never had sex Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. And, and so of course he was he had his guard up and so he was like this woman's not my mom there's no way and she would have shown up with all that proof and everything. There's going to be that initial anger, that hate. And so, so she was, she afraid, was of that. afraid of it. She was afraid of it. I what mother I just, wouldn't? I just can't imagine not, you know, like as a mother, I, I can't imagine not, yeah. not looking for my kid. Like, but the, again, the, I'm not in that situation. Yeah, but so and, and we're know. also 70, 80 years in the future. Yeah, that's true. Uh yeah, it's we're eighty years in the future, so everything's different, you know. And like, since we've come a long way, you know. I mean, back like she, they covered it about what she went through because she was pregnant and she was having a baby, and like, and, and then you know the religious part and the society, you know, social class part, you know. So, so yeah, she was afraid of it, and she okay. was still a young grandmother at yeah, the end, she was you know. Still pretty young. Well, she had him pretty young. Yeah, she was seventeen, eighteen, I think. Yeah, something like that. So. Um, okay, so we've basically covered the family. Well, okay, no, let's cover the rest of the family. Um, what do you think the purpose of the dog's point of view was? Well, he's also an important character. You got to think about it. He's a dog that that went through interviews, right? Mm-hmm. That was military trained, but he failed at his at his job. Okay, I mean, I guess. Back for story purposes, they just didn't realize that German Shepherds or you know, but those were the better ones for the military. I don't know why they were trying on this hairy thing. Um, but it was cute because it, it's just a cute part of the story. You know, we I think a lot of us as humans, we love animals and a lot of us can relate to, you know, we all have a dog that we love and are part of the family. Okay. Um, they become our first baby, you know, like yeah. like in a couple. Yeah, right, like, like we had, we had you know, ours. Right, we had our first kid. Right, I mean, he was a, he was, a, he got in a lot of trouble, and we went through a lot of adventures with him. And he was a big part of the family. You know, he got to meet our three of our kids, and you know, till this day, we still cry for him. You know, we we hear his name, and we get all bummed out. So why couldn't six thirty be an important part of this family? That was their first baby. Like he was part of the reason they. They could work out, you know, they, 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 they worked together, you know, she found them, they worked out, he asked about them, next thing you know, he's going on jogs with them, he was part of the family, like, we saw him with Matt, like, he was always taking care of Matt, oh, Matt likes him, I like him, you know, lady likes him, I, I like him, mm-hmm. uh, protect my family, this is my flock, I try to protect him, I and it didn't happen, it was sad that he always blamed himself for it, and she blamed herself for, for what happened. So it's just a, a chain of events where somebody loves you and something bad happens to you. You know, we all go through that that factor of if I wouldn't have done this or if yeah. I wouldn't have said if this. If I right? wouldn't have made him use the leash. Right. Yeah, if exactly. I wouldn't have been afraid of popping sounds. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And and the worst part about it is it's a big difference between the show and the and the freaking book. Yes. 
is the way he dies. The way he dies and by who he dies. Yes. Like, what the fuck? A cop? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the- like, like the, I mean, yeah, both ways are super fucked up the way he dies, right? Because in the book, he's run over by a cop car. While he's tying his shoes. Well, no, he's he slipped and fell on the. Oh, he, right, the the little oil slip. Yeah, thing. he slipped and he fell in the ground because the dog yanked and ran after he heard the popping sound. So six thirty gets spooked and yanks him, and so he throws him off balance, and he ends up on the ground. And the cops didn't have their lights on; they were too busy talking to each other. I don't know, but how the heck did they run him over? You know, yeah. that's why I don't understand. Well, you know, he and, slipped, he's face down, and they ran over his head. Well, they that's were, how I took it. Well, I just know that they ran him over, and and. Either way, I'm like, how did they not see him if they had their headlights on? They must have not been looking. Oh, no. They, yeah, they, they weren't, weren't looking. looking. No, he was backing up. That's the other thing. So he wasn't. Oh, I don't. I I, I didn't understand that. I, yeah. I'd have to revisit yeah, they, that they, to he find was, out. They were backing up. But then in the TV show, he got hit by a bus. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to cross the street he's and like, pull the, yeah. the leash and, and a bus comes. And yeah. Takes and him. a bus takes him. Like, either way. Yeah. But, but, but I, I but still the, think that the TV one was much more shocking because i wasn't expecting it to be a bus yeah you were waiting for it yeah <laughs> no um so going back to 6 30 i'm sorry um uh, uh you're talking about his guilt no yeah it's just it, it humanizes everything a little bit more you know you see it from it's important to see it from his point of view because that was their baby that was that was the only other person that saw the love between them, right? Okay. We're seeing, we're we're reading about it, mm-hmm. but they were always such loners and weirdos that they had no f- no close friends, friends mm-hmm. no friends. Period. So there was nobody else to witness what they had, that chemistry between them, that love between them. Okay. Except for the dog. Okay. And the dog, you're hearing him through that chapter when he, his point of view, he's letting you know how they behave. Mm-hmm. When they're being intimate, right? How she scratches his stomach or something like that. And then, you know, they're going to make funny noises. And, you know, like, okay. right? He, he he talks about what his point of view is watching them mate. Uh, how they look at each other. How they sit there after running or uh, rowing or cooking uh, the Christmases. The Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, I guess, on, on the book, right? Uh-huh. The whole conversation about Thanksgiving was another great thing. Um just that like it's the point of view of somebody that was the closest to them that was like their kid okay okay so like if if mads had right and been it, around how and she it, maybe her point of view right and then it lets you see parents. that she blames herself he blames her himself but you understand what happened so you know that nobody's at fault okay all right all right so um not in in part in continuing did, with people that you're saying Calvin connected. Did the people whole story. wait? Hold on. Did the did the ladies hate uh, the whole book the that part with the dog? No, no, no. They loved him. They okay. loved the dog. Um, but in continuing with the connection, and this is something that I didn't ask the ladies, but I will ask you since you know we're flowing with it. But now her family kind of gets expanded like she's never had friends right she she doesn't really know people she doesn't really have any friends but through calvin because you're saying that calvin was this connection like he's the core of the story and it's through him that everyone's connected so in a way i i understand and i i see what you're saying i agree with what you're saying in that sense because now she also becomes part of the rowing family Mm -hmm. right so uh she what is the point of rowing, first of all? Like, why why do you think rowing is important in the story? And then with that, how is that connection to the rowers important later? Well, so Calvin loved rowing, right? Yeah. And He's rowing, all about fitness. Right. He Yeah, he was jogging before people jogged, right? Mm-hmm. But he read somewhere and he saw that, you know, the science was there, it, yeah. what it does to your blood flow in your heart. Yeah. So he started doing that. While people were running in place at home, he was actually out running. He's in ballerina. Right. He, slippers, right? <laughs> um, he was famous with the police department for that fact because everybody was always calling and complaining about so this weird man running around, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So rowing's also that part, you know. So for Elizabeth, Saad was cooking, aside from work, it was cooking and reading. Mm-hmm. Those were her things. Okay. If you think about it, right? right? But his things were rowing. His thing was rowing and running. And running. But what about the rowing is important? It's the balance. It's the science. It's the physics. Like what he was trying to teach it. It was uh, it's it was his moments where he can let go of his anger and his frustration. Anybody that's even gotten a rowing machine, you know, for workouts mm-hmm. knows that and, and you, you can so I, I, I've You can speak from experience. Right? I freaking love that thing. I never care for it, but once I sat on one one time, I you remember I told you I can't walk. Like yeah. I lost myself. I lost myself. All my insecurities and anger and frustrations and self doubt and negative thoughts and happy thoughts and uh whatever you want to call it. Man, I got lost in there. Like and time went by so fast. I was like Whoa, I've been here an hour already. I need to stop. And this know? is on an erg. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm just covered in sweat. I was like, i getting a workout that I can never imagine. It felt like when I first started running long distance when I was young. You know? and I was it, like, it's funny to me, uh, and this is something I didn't cover with the ladies because I didn't really think about it at the time, but it was funny to me when you got into rowing or with, to the rowing machines at the gym or at, you know, yeah, at the gym. And then you also have one at home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I grew up with one. My dad was into rowing. Right. Um, because he had his old school 1980s version of one. The the the, the two the two chrome handles with the shocks too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I had you, one of those as a kid too. Well, your, I didn't have one. but You put yeah. your feet into it. You strap your feet in and you just go um, back and forth, back and forth. And my brothers and I, I remember we used to play with that all the time and... But I, yeah, I remember my dad would sit on it and he'd, he'd go for, yeah, an hour. He'd just keep rowing. Um, and it's, it's funny now. It was funny to me when you started doing it and how much you would talk about how great you felt um, after using the rower. Because um, it just reminded me of being a kid, you know, and I just, I just thought it was yeah, it's funny. funny. And, it, and it's funny that it comes up in the story. Too. Yeah. And it's funny you say that, Rower, because uh, my brother in law uh, had one of those. And I remember, yeah, the same thing as a kid trying to use it. And I thought it was so cool. He said 80 ones. Um, but then nowadays, and, and to this day, I would like to have one of those with then water in it. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I would die for one of those. Yeah. We just don't know where we'd put it. Yeah. And even right now, like I, I, I have it somewhere nearby. I just want to dust it off. And, I'm, and there's moments when I was like, I want to bring it in and start, you know, using it. But like you said, we're still kind of moving stuff around and trying to ubicate yourselves. And yeah. So, but yeah, it, it is, it is great therapy. I, I, I do love it. So for, for, so for Calvin, I imagine it was the same thing, you know, it's just something that brought him that balance. Okay, that, and that. then for Elizabeth, because she didn't want to do it, right? It, it it literally was a moment of, but I'm a woman, or that's a man sport that made her be like, oh shit, <laughs> I just exactly, <laughs> yeah. And he and he, and he, you know, and he kind of, you know, he just kind of looked her. at her like, what? Are yeah, you, yeah. And then he just tries to explain do it. This? Yeah, and 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 I think that was another thing that the connection between them and that love and that chemistry that I keep on referring to is like. uh she was willing to try it because she knew it made him happy just as much as her cooking made him happy. But, right. But I think, Oh yeah, for sure. You know, but Cause he but loved I think it her. also pushed her. Right. Because here was something that she initially didn't want to do because, Oh, that's what men do. And then she caught herself in a whole like, shoot, I'm just shooting myself in the mouth because here I am saying that I want to be respected and it's part of being a human thing, right? It's what I tell you. We always contradict ourselves sooner or later yeah. on something that we say. But then she ate, you know, she ate her words and she did Yeah, it. and she went for it. Yeah, And she and, couldn't swim. And she couldn't swim. That's what I'm getting at. And then he, in the show, he teaches her how to swim, right? He teaches her. In the her. show, yeah, but in the book. In the book, it doesn't he, get covered doesn't if she does or he doesn't. But but it's, it's part of, it's out. assumed, yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah, he assumes by the way that she does it. And he's like, why is she willing to do no, this? No, I, I think there's still... They still do capsize, I think, in the book. And that's when he finds out that she can't swim. No. It's not? Well, no. okay. Then I'm getting, he, I'm he, getting them he mixed mentions, up then. Yeah, he mentions that he's afraid 
that they oh, might get capsized, oh, oh, oh. which is the reason yeah, why yeah, 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 he yeah. wants to go with a group yes, in yes, case yes, yes. it happens. I remember now. The male natural instinct is to go save the woman. Yeah, yeah. So that so if safe. he's too far away or he can't do it, he knows that there's going to be somebody else there that can grab her, that can save her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember. That's right. That's right. And and now and that becomes her family too. So right. those that group of rowers, those men become her family in the end right doctor. Her, her doctor yeah, yeah her is doctor. a rower and and he uh he appreciates her he sees what a great rower she is he he values her ability uh, to the point that he wants her to be part of his team yeah and he's never sexist you notice yeah, that right no, he never ne- and no moment is he ever like degrading towards her yeah or puts her down for yeah. being a female yeah so he was always just saw as an equal it, to him you're a roar. And yeah. it gets covered in the book, right? Roars yeah. are roars. And that's that. And it's that's a that. camaraderie. It's a brotherhood that cannot be, you know, that's all they talk about. They're obsessed with it. Yeah. It's it's their own little group, their yeah. own little clique. So then she is accepted into them because of him. And then they see her and it's like, dude, she's just as good as you. And she's barely started doing it. Yeah. And you've been doing it your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's that competitive nature of hers of, Anything a man can do, I can also try to do. Can do. I can do better. Yeah, I can do better. <laughs> like it, it was, it was part of her persona, right? Okay. So okay. that's why, in a way, I'm like an autistic person. Usually has one thing, and they shut down to everything around them. And she, she tries things, and she does different things, and she tries to perfect everything that she's trying to do. So you, she's just a perfectionist. It's just she, yeah. It, it's just, just her drive, you know. Drive. Yeah. So. To, like to be sexist, right? Like you get right up. It's like, oh, if a girl can do that, why can't you? Or you run like a girl, right? They yeah. always use it as a as, as a demeaning as a demeaning thing. But you think about it, and you're like, uh, what's wrong with the way she runs? Like, there's you know, I mean, yeah, there's different muscles and different you know, body shapes and everything. Yeah, different. it's different, but like. That's- those girls uh, that keep on doing it yeah. and are great runners can outrun most guys, right? That's yeah. why they end up being in the Olympics or everything. Right? <laughs> um, so, and then continuing with the whole idea of extended family because of Calvin, she has the neighbor, Harriet. But the doctor too, because even the doctor becomes a big important f- factor, right? The rower. Yeah. Like not to discredit him too. Like he comes in, he, I mean, he becomes her doctor to have the childbirth. Yeah. He becomes a doctor that comes in and checks on her because of postpartum. Yeah. Um, uh, You know, he's, folding diapers and washing dishes while he's talking to yeah, her trying to get her to her. go back into rowing yeah. because he needs people to row uh, uh, you know but he's like a nice character too that he still checks in on her and helps her yeah, out that's and what talks I'm saying. to her it's her extended family yeah so harriet the neighbor right she was friends with calvin right um and both in the book and in not, not i don't think that they were super friendly in the book they made it seem like he was because of the kids, which is a totally completely different than on the book. Because on the book, they're all grown up and yeah. they don't live it. Well, home. that's what I'm saying. In the book, in the book, I don't think that they were super friends. They just knew each other. Like, right. It was the just neighbor. a cordial neighbor right. uh, relationship versus in the TV show, they made it seem like they were really good friends. Um, and so that's another relationship that grows no matter which one you look at, uh, because of Calvin. So if it wasn't for the connection to Calvin, living in Calvin's house, she would have not never gotten that connection with Harriet. And Harriet's character is maternal, uh, a positive maternal influence on her. She's there to help her uh, raise uh, Mads. Right. And, and- but- at first, I felt like it was more like an excuse to get out of her house because she hated her husband so much. Yeah, I, I agree. So, but uh, yeah, as a, as a, as the story goes on, you get, uh, yeah, she gets to be an important factor that that knows how they work. You know that that shows you that if you have the patience and you know and, and you put up with some people and you get to know them. You need to understand. You get to understand them and see where they come from and how they talk, right? The demeanor, you know, mm-hmm. like like you were, we always say that there's a way that I talk that everybody takes it the wrong way, mm-hmm. uh, but but just but you know me and you're like, oh, I know when you're joking or I know when you're serious. Yeah, most, you know? most of the time. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, then, but you have a better uh, batting average than everybody else. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm closer to you, but... Um, so, okay, so so yeah, so Harriet, uh, you know, because because uh, you know, even Matt is a lot like her parents. You know, she's very matter of fact, mm-hmm, uh, yes. very scientific about it, very advanced for a little girl her age. But do you okay, so or I guess we'll go there then. Is the, the fact that Matt is Mads like that naturally? Do you think that was her nature? Or do you think it's because her mom pushed her to learn so much at a young age? I don't think her mom pushed her to learn. I think her mom was just teaching her stuff, and she's picking it up so fast. So it's fast. in her nature. It's in her nature. It's part of who she is. And it just proves a lot of those scientists, uh, scientific uh, theories out there mm-hmm. when they say, like, do you know the advantages of reading to your child? Uh, living, and was it? Uh, I'm sorry. I, and what to your child when you're pregnant is so beneficial to them by the time uh-huh. that they're born. Yeah. And then because they recognize your voice and they you know pat speech patterns and it stimulates their brains and they're hearing words that that you know probably they they'll hear when they come back out or they'll and then if you read them as a child you're expanding the vocabulary for the same reasons well, you know same because thing with music right why you're right? supposed to yeah have music the baby so to Madge was getting books read to her nightly while she was pregnant when she was born you know because she couldn't find ways to put her to sleep uh we've all been there yeah and uh music. so yeah music and she would talk to her and the conversation it was like it was her new calvin Okay. You know, like it was the. She just the, treated her like a little person. Yeah, it was the one person that was smart enough to have a conversation with her. That okay. they could, because they're psychoanalyzing even people. Okay. You know what I mean? Like in, in the show and on the book. Okay. Like, so, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's why I'm saying Harriet is that important on that factor because even with the librarian, whenever Matt or the preacher, whenever they were trying to help her or like Which when they first meet her. Which is another connection yeah, through Calvin. <laughs> the way that she talks to them, she has to explain. But the librarian eventually, you know, in the future, like later on, you know you know that she's dealt with Matt so many times that he she already knows how she talks, how she expresses mm-hmm. herself mm-hmm. and everything. It's like. Yeah, you have to excuse Matt. She's got a way with people that it's you know, and it's like the mom, like the dad, like yeah. like I, you know, their kids are like the parents. Yeah, you know. So I mean, are our kids like this? I mean, you know, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> so much. They all have something of ours. Well, okay. The so, oldest is oh my goodness, it reminds me so much of me at times. So then now we've covered Harriet, and now well that that. The, the preacher, the preacher Wakely. Pa- oh, no, I'm sorry, not the preacher, pastor, right? The pastor, Wakely, the pastor, yes. yeah. pastor Wakely. Now, I mean, it's not known right up front, but we find out that he's also connected to Calvin, right? You All know, along, he was connected to Calvin the whole time. He he was an admirer of Calvin and uh, it had attended his lectures when he was himself in college before he joined the the ministry, and became pen pals with him and it's and if it wasn't for wakely he wouldn't even be in that city right because he's the one who told him how great the weather was there and calvin was looking for a for place rowing. With great yeah weather he told him rowing. he had a great yeah. rowing program too and so that's why he moved to that town so if it hadn't even been for him for that mr or um, pastor wakely he wouldn't have ever even been in that town or at hastings yeah and it's funny uh, and i'm sorry but like like uh, I'm sorry for cutting off, but I I found it interesting that the pastor had free time and went to a lecture where he was speaking, and he could respect everything that he was saying from a scientific point. Mm-hmm. But when he was throwing the question about stuff that cannot be answered, there was no formulas or nothing. He automatically said, "Well, it's an act of God." Then, so then for the pastor, it was more like, uh, "Here's the science, man." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who once does data and anything not there, he's giving credit to God. So that's what intrigued them. That he even though he saw it such a scientist, he's he'll still talk he, about God. He was willing to yeah. he was open to the Oops, idea sorry. of faith despite his scientific background. Right. And that's what created their relationship Whereas, where they started writing to each other. I don't think Elizabeth would have been open to it. Oh no, not at all. Because she hated religion, like because of the the lies that she was raised with, I don't think she would have been as open to those type of conversations. Maybe I'm wrong, but we never see her have a theological, a truly theological versus science right. conversation with anybody. And then so. why does he? Like, and, and you're right. And I think the the fact that she read the letters, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and when he was there. Yeah. And she puts it together. And that's the only thing I liked about Elizabeth is that she can put things like that so quickly together. Yeah, she's you know? good at critical thinking. It happened with, with the priest, with the preacher, with the pastor. Uh-huh. It happened with the mother. Like, yeah. she's like, oh, wait, I read. Th-. And and it happened with the lawyer, right? Yeah. Like, she put things together about what Calvin had written on his journal books. Yeah. So, um, um, let's so go. yeah, guys, if you, if, or ladies, if, if, uh, you haven't quite shared everything with your loved one, I guess keeping a journal about certain things like that, once you die that you want them to know or stories that you want to pass on, maybe, uh, that might be kind of helpful because that, that I was mean, a very that's important assuming factor that they want to know, because, right. you know, you might be in a relationship where neither one cares. So yeah, but it's another form of therapy. Right? Yeah, that's true. They say journaling is, is therapy. Right. Um, so going back to Mads and 630, um, I know you were saying that Mads, her nature, it was just her nature to be smart. It's not necessarily the nurture. So for you, all the reading and the words, it was just a presentation of information, but it was Mad's nature that absorbed it and made her so intelligent at such a young age. Right. What about the dog? Because the dog did understand words. So yeah, that's, that's right. Nature. I forgot about that. Yeah. I, uh, because remember she would read to the dog too, and she was trying to teach him. So is words. that, is that her nurture, her trying to push them or not setting any limits on them? Um, or it's just the dog's nature. He was just Well, smart. remember, she picked up on it. She picked up on it because of certain things and commands, as she said, uh-huh. that she realized that. It was like, okay, this dog has a 250-word vocabulary. Okay. And so then she was like, all right, let's see where we can be at, right? Okay, so like, he was a smart dog just to begin with. And he was a military dog. Yeah, that's so true. So there's a command. So there's yeah. every command for everything that they wanted him to do, right? Yeah. Sit, stay. Roll, yeah. attack, crawl, smell, whatever. Yeah, smell, yeah. track, you know, do this for this, do that for that. So obviously he passed a lot of tests before they moved on to the final ones, right? Yeah, he just didn't pass the sound. Yeah, he just didn't the pass explosion. the yeah, explosions. So, so yeah, so that's interesting. And it just goes to show again that, you know, animals and dogs are not are not as dumb as people think. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they can be trained, they can be worked. Just if, if a dog can have a cavalry, of course, why couldn't a child, right? Especially a child of two very smart scientists. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to uh, back to Harriet for a quick moment because in she was the sad. book, she's sad. She's I was just so sad. different than in the TV show. Yeah. Um, now, do you think in the TV show is just political? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, agree. yeah. I think it was more of a oh, this is such a strong woman's book and. It's, it's it's so you know like Shira. Uh, let's continue with let's that. Let's continue and let's. But now let's just make it about a woman race. who's black, and yeah, let's bring race into it. And you know, being a female, and if just being a female is hard, I'm pretty sure being a female of color it's extra hard. So let's just add that in here. Okay. Okay. So that was the that was the taste of woke. Yeah, because was just changing Harriet's story. Yeah, because. You, you can make anybody any care like any race you want to, right? Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. So the so TV show a, always takes liberties and Yeah, and that's the thing about about books, right? We yeah. read books and, and we they're being played in our mind to our mind, right? Yeah. We that's have true. certain actors or people portraying <laughs> okay. characters in our yeah, mind. Yeah, that's true. So then later on a movie's made about it, it's like, Oh, I, I didn't see him doing it. I saw somebody else doing that part, you know. Okay. Like, well, going back to the whole political but is it do you think it was extreme or did it make a good point for the time? Like, think about the times that it was set in. You know what? I haven't looked up if I was an actual event that happened. Okay. Okay. Uh, if it was an actual event that happened historically, like during that time in that in that area, then it will make sense. Okay. I, I honestly, when I watched the show, I was like, okay, I'm just watching the show. Like, okay, cool. This is also going on at the same time. Interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, cool. And I, I didn't understand why you were so upset about it. Like, no, this doesn't happen. This is fluff. They're adding, they're adding shit to it, right? Yeah. And I was like, ah, you just, you just being, just being a nerd right now. You're just being too much about the freaking book. Then you know, I get to the book, and I was like, oh hell, it was so different. Yeah. It, it was yeah. And they, comp- yeah, they changed the whole freaking story. Like, it's just nothing matched in that part i was like 
the book was fine the way it was. Why? If you could have made her back in the in the sh- in the show too, that's fine. But just keep on going with the book. Like, yeah. why did why did you take such a big liberty when it came to these yeah. these characters? Well, that's a that's the whole thing about adaptations, right? <laughs> so, anyways, okay, so let's move on from there and go into Walter, the TV show producer. Oh, what a sweetheart! Um, so. <laughs> I mean, I kind of saw him a little spineless. Like, to me, I was like, for a man of that time. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. That's what I was saying. He's a sweetheart. He's a super sweetheart. I mean, he's taking care of a child that isn't his. Yeah, Uh, which on the show, they don't cover that. In the show... They never say that. They don't? I don't recall. But in the book, they do. So in the show, I don't recall. Yeah, um, that was 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 messed up. But yeah, it's not even his child. And he's raising her on his own. Because the mom's disappeared and he doesn't know. And that's how how that's how he comes into Elizabeth's life, right? It's right. because her his daughter keeps eating her daughter's lunch. So yeah. and and she's just such a strong character in his mind that he thinks, Oh my god, she'd be great for TV. Yeah, and then and so, on top of that, she's beautiful. Yeah, and so this this character is the only character that has no connection to, to Calvin. Calvin. Mm-hmm. The only connection is the daughter. Yes. Uh, so, but yeah, this is the one character that definitely, yeah, no, no connection to Kelvin. Yeah. And, and so he's, he's now interested in having her become part of this cooking show, you know, to fill in this boring time of day. You yeah. Know, I thought that TV was funny slot. too on the, on the TV, on the, on the show, it was an old lady, right? Before. Yeah. yeah. And on the book, it was a clown. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. again, things that they changed. Like kids programming. Yeah. yeah. So they they bring her in and, and his character, like I said, he's very he's a sweetheart. He's not confrontational. He just kind of wants everything to work out. Um, but him and Harriet end up hitting it off at the end. Yeah. And why? why and they were keeping this and they keep it as a secret. And they secret, kept it a secret right? from Elizabeth, right? She right. didn't she didn't know. Well, and from us too, because we yeah. didn't find out until Elizabeth shows up. Yeah, that's true. You know, and we're like, whoa, what? And so, why do you think that was being kept a secret? That, and how did that even happen? Well, the 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 studio audience thing. The, that's how okay. they met. Remember oh, the, yeah, when they, right, when they, right, they right. did school and they showed yeah, up. Yeah, she showed up with with uh, Mads. Right, and so then you know when they're talking about like your mom's not going to be happy about you being missing school and this and that, and okay. and then you know Harriet tries to explain to him how it why yeah and then why you know and besides she's like this and he's like oh yeah somebody else that that knows what it's like to deal with her and yeah. talk to her okay. and be around so, her so, so she was there elizabeth was their connection yeah their connection you know they're probably there it's like don't you just hate it when she does this probably you know like conversations that we didn't get to read or, or mm-hmm. see yeah but yeah, because there wasn't really too much between them in the book. My thing was like the age difference, right? Because it didn't ever cover how old he is, really. I th- he's supposed to be like I think in his fifties. Oh, is he okay? So then that makes sense, like why they would end up together. Because, like going through it, like so I missed that part. But to me, I'm like, okay, he's a producer. He has a kid, uh, so he's got to be like what, late thirties, maybe forties. Uh, and I know that Harriet in my mind was like 50, 60s okay. because they were old, they were retired, their kids were yeah. grown up and well, out her of the house. husband and... was still beating her. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, oh, that's, that's another thing I kind of didn't like about Well, her, we, we haven't it. touched any of the bad stuff. Oh, okay. Um, okay. so, but, uh, so, uh, was it? It was definite to me. It was surprising. It was a big shocker. Yes, yeah, Harriet, it, it, was, yeah. it was a cute shocker. It was, a, cute it was shocker. a good one. Yeah, 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 because it makes sense that they would end up together as being the two best friends, basically. Right. Of Elizabeth. Yeah, and, th- and that was the other thing that I thought was cool, like him realizing that Elizabeth was his best friend. Yeah. And then you know because of the relationship they had, the trust, the conversations. That uh, I thought that was nice. A, a moment of two kids. An altercation between their kids led to having such a great friendship. Yeah. No, sometimes that, it happens, right? That, and it's yeah. not even an altercation because her daughter wasn't mad about sharing her food. Right. And if you think about it, so one friend, which was a neighbor, mm-hmm. was a her best friend when it came to all, you know, like it, it was somebody that helped her through a hard time in her personal life. Yeah. But then the other person became where became her friend was somebody that was there to help her with a new career 
and financial opportunity uh, opportunity when okay. she's going through a rough time okay. right so one was an emotional level and the other one was on a financial, financial. level okay. and then through those two different backgrounds uh two great friendships were born okay and that it helped her get through a very difficult time because... and it brought two people together that yeah, probably deserved the chance that had they both came from failed marriages yeah and a time an era when divorces were bad things and you yeah. were shunned and you know discriminated against and no one would ever, why Why would you go out with a divorce? A man that was, you know, his wife left him. Like, there's yeah. got to be something wrong with him. Yeah. And an older woman also that, you know, oh, her, she got a divorce. Oh, oh how scandalous. And she's Catholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> even worse. <Wow. laughs> okay. So now that we've covered kind of all of the good points, I guess, uh, we can go into some of the bad points. Mm -hmm. Um so we know that she is raped in college. Yeah. And that they try to rape her at the studio. But that one was, okay, so here's my thing. I, I, I have always have had an issue, and you know this, with rape. Yes. Like rape scenes, rape yeah. in the movie, whatever. I just don't I, don't, I don't like it. It really bothers me. It makes my freaking skin crawl. Mm -hmm. um, so. Now you as a man, why does that bother you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's Something just, in it's your subconscious? Subconsciously. I, I just think it's so wrong. Like, I don't find it interesting to take something by force. Okay. I think that's my thing. Anything. You know, it, it's like love should be given unconditionally. How, A how hug non, should be... How non-machista of you. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just... I think when it comes to something like that, like sex... It's uh, it's better. It's more enjoyable when it's like you know two parties are behind it. You know, like willingly. Okay. Like I say, the thrill of the hunt. You know, like. Well, like, isn't that what rape is? The thrill of the hunt. Yeah, that's a different. That's a hyena thrill of the hunt. You know, they're laughing through it. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. You know, it's 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 they're getting joy out of hurting. Hurting someone and hearing them cry and and empower having power over somebody that's weaker. Okay, you know something. It, it's hate. It's hateful. It's, well, yeah, and it was hateful because she she had found an error in her teacher's in her teacher's uh, test, and she was just pointing out the error, thinking no big deal. The shit and, that bothered me the most. And he took it. The wrong way yeah the, the, i mean the rape was horrible right yeah. yeah but i'm glad that she fucking stabbed them like, i'm glad yes. like most women unfortunately for them you know it's shocking and they and then and you they know, can't fight and they back. freeze you know and there's nothing for them to help them themselves or defend themselves mm -hmm. you know uh and a yeah. lot of times when women do fight back they're the ones who get in trouble. Right. And it's not that it gets worse, you know, the rapists like they liked it and, and they end up Freaking pounding them till they're almost dead. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things that you, you never know, right? Like mm -hmm. obviously we know more about rape because it, it, more people have talked about it and have survived it. And they talk about their horrible experiences and you know, like we said, we see it all the time on shows and movies and and it just feels like uh it takes away from the imagination and it scars you. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, it's it's fucking horrible that women had to go through that. But in this in this scenario, it was happening. But luckily, she was able to do something mm -hmm. to to get him back. So obviously, um, it was unfulfilled. Yeah, it, it was. But it was still, you know, she still got violated. But um, the the shit that really bothered me was a fucking cop. Like the cop, like they're supposed to be there to protect and serve, and this cop was just uh, what's that word again? A misogynist. Yes misogynist he like he literally defi like he fit the definition of the word like you know he was exactly that i think you a can lot of the men tell, in this book were no he you can tell that he freaking hated women mm -hmm. like like it's your fault you cost it uh you know you probably teased it or you know what whatever yeah. Yeah. it's just his 
Like, are you sure that's what happened? Like, did you really mean it like that? Like, are you sure you want to make that statement? Like, what the hell, dude? Like, like, did you not have a mother? Do you not have a wife at home? He probably you didn't probably have a daughter. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, it, that really bothered me. While on the second one, where in, in the studio, the producer, the yeah. main boss, yeah. it was more hilarious because she's like, I don't know what is it about men to think that their genitalia is so attractive. And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, yeah. <laughs> She's, that shit's nasty like yeah. it's ugly even i th think that you know well, like, my favorite part was the fact that she, all she had to do is show her knife and he had a heart attack. he had a heart attack <laughs> yeah was yeah it was like oh you want to poke me with that well guess what i'm gonna I'll poke, poke you, with, you this. with this and they're like oh, oh, oh. how dare she like answer <laughs> talk back to me you know like like that's uh yeah, that, 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 that that's why i saying it, it was more hilarious but it was because of that Right. Yeah. But of course, she already knew how to defend herself. Yeah. So she was going to take care of him before that. Yeah. That should happen yeah, yeah. again. He wasn't going to touch her on the, on this. She wasn't going to let him touch her. I, yeah. I also don't like how in the TV show they changed where she was afraid of Calvin. Oh, no, when... she was not afraid of Calvin. She was afraid of the, the action that he did. It triggered a memory. Well, no, she didn't That's like closed doors. Yeah. Remember, he, her... she wouldn't let him close any doors. And in the book, they don't do that. In the book, she trusts him right. implicitly. Oh, but no, yeah, on the yeah, show, yeah. they made it seem like she was afraid of him. I think it was just the doors. way that they build up to get to that, to what happened to her. Because we hadn't seen it. We yeah, hadn't heard about true. it, right? Yeah. So I didn't know what was going on. But they're giving you like little hints like, oh. And She's in my mind, something. yeah, That's when I was wrong. watching, it's like, oh, yeah, somebody tried to rape her. Okay, yeah. so somebody tried to make a move at her. I have no moment in time that I think, oh, she was raped. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, somebody tried to make a move at her, right? Yeah. And then when you they actually show it to you, you're like, fuck, all right, not cool. You yeah. Know? Um, um. Okay, so those are two ugly points in the book. But then, what about Miss Frask? Oh man, night and day between another one that they took so, a little bit too many. Yeah. So in the book and on the show, she's very she's got some quality that are kind of the same, but. Overall, Miss Frask in the book is a total bitch. But let's be honest, like that's women, though. You know, okay. women will always be like that. It doesn't matter where you work, go, work, and like especially in a workplace. Like I've always noticed, and, and I haven't worked around a lot of women. Maybe I have in the last couple of years, but yeah, you've I, had women. Well, bosses. No, no, I lied. I have, I have, but. I've noticed that women are fucking hateful. Like mm -hmm. they, they, they. Be talking shit nonstop each kind each other's backs. Yeah. Like, hey girl, how you doing? Oh, you look so great today. Oh, fuck that bitch. Can't stand her. Like, yeah, it's I don't true. know what she's thinking You're about wearing that true. damn color. She's all bright. Ugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like that's just the women nature. So if somebody's better than and that's why I laughed and I said, like, a lot of the guys I worked with are a bunch of bitches. <laughs> 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 You could see them as a Miss Frask. Right, yeah. Like, like, like they're stabber. fucking just haters. You know, just yeah. hate. Like, oh, oh, my God, I can't believe he fucking got a promotion and I did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, my God, I can't believe he got the day off. And, you know, how many days off does he get? Ah. Uh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was like the same, but it's just because somebody used them better. Like, they always have to find something, right? Yeah. And that's like women. Like, oh, I can't believe she wore that. Or I can't believe, you know. I like, can't why, believe he's dating her. Yeah, or, why? Like, what's better? And, and right? Like, it, that's a funny, like, that's a funny thing, right? Like, remember when I told my oh, son, like, hey, you know, like, girls, the pretty one doesn't want to go out and dance with you. Take the the the, 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 the ugly, ugly ones, yeah, or the one that's just being and neglected. And they all want him all of a sudden. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Why did she dance with her? Like, don't even give her the pretty girl the time. Now you don't even ask her. Just go straight to the other girl and be like, thank you for your time, appreciate it, whatever for a dance." Uh -huh. And then they were like, "Why the hell did she ask her, not me? I'm better looking than her. I'm wearing, wearing <laughs> better dress. I have better hair." So, but Miss Frass, going back to Miss. Yeah, Frass, so no, that's what I'm getting at. Miss Frass is one of those. It's yeah. like. Like, how dare she think that she's better than us because, oh, she went to UCLA and she's a chemist. Yeah. You know, how dare she uh, talk to us because she, she thinks she's she smarter than us. She's she smarter than everybody. She yeah. a lot of the issues. Like, she, she's, like, on the guy's side. You know, like, oh, yeah, you're you're pregnant. You can't be here. You know, like, she's Yeah, you got what problem. you wanted. You know, you, you know what you wanted to yeah. do. You were trying to get yourself a sugar daddy mm -hmm. because that's what – most of the women in that place did. Yeah. Right? Right. Because she was even dating one of the chemists right. at one point, And then he dumped her for somebody else. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. After he slept with her, yeah, and then he said, "Well, I'm gonna marry this girl because she's a virgin." Well, you're not. Yeah, you know, and it's like, wait, hold on, what? Yeah, and in the book, I guess she gets fired for gaining too much weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like one got they fired too Elizabeth old. for being pregnant. Yeah, too old and too fat. Yeah, and then they fire Miss Frask for yeah, and then but in the TV version, she's much nicer. She's she's kind of just like one of the girls, you know, she's just yeah, like, she's trying to make her one of the girls. She's trying to be yeah. like that. That one girl that's like always trying to be nice to you to get you to kick you with all this group. of yeah. little, You know, moody broads. Yeah. Uh, but no, in reality, she's like the leader of the damn broads. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's the leader. Of, yeah. She's the manager of the secretaries. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because, yeah, she was she was interesting in that aspect because she was a hater. Uh, like I said, most yeah. women are like the jealousy, like she's better than me because of this. She's better uh-huh. than me than that. And I think the hate got even more real because um, I don't think they, they don't cover it on the, on the book. But, you know, like Calvin, like he he was a uh, a, a known name. He was yeah. a big character. Right. Yeah. And he never showed any time or any interest in, interest any, of the in any of them. So that was another point that came up in the book club <laughs> was the fact that. Would he have been interested in Elizabeth if she hadn't been beautiful? Or was oh, yeah. all that matter? Oh, no, yeah, no. He would have been interested. Was her intelligence. Oh, no, yeah. The fact that the the level, like I said, the, the, the chemistry between them was, was, you can't deny it. Okay. You, you can deny it that. But, but it had nothing, you don't think it had to do with her beauty. No. So, because I, the other point if, that was if, made is if it if it had been about beautiful, surely there were beautiful secretaries. Right. And and it also at the same time, yeah, def, that's a good point. But definitely, like, don't you think he would have noticed her a whole lot sooner? Okay. Yeah, if it was all about her beauty. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't, right? The first time he saw her and they had her interaction, like, he wasn't like, oh, hey, excuse me. Can you tell yeah. your boss to please no. not? Get, what you are know? you doing? No, yeah. Like, like hey, don't out. touch my stuff. Yeah. Get, out of my, you know, get out of my area. Yeah. You know? So so she had been ugly and still intelligent or not as beautiful yeah. and still intelligent. He still would have been interested. In of because, course. Because the book describes him as not very handsome, even though in the show they made him seem more handsome. So, uh, but in the book, he's sup- supposedly not as handsome as they portray him in the Well, TV no, because he was, yeah, he was really tall, right? Really uh, tall and skinny. Kind of awkward. Yeah, awkward because mm-hmm. he doesn't know how to deal with people. Yeah. So obviously it's going to be awkward. But once you start seeing people come out of their cocoon, people yeah. like that, mm-hmm. right? Because you see it in the cafeteria and people talk about the, how they looked at them and how they judged them and everything. And then they were like, you know, when they were going to break up, like they were so jealous of them being so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that when they thought they were going to break up because of the whole conversation of of not getting married, not getting yeah. married. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not so perfect anymore. It's for sure. It's over now. Blah, blah. blah. And then, you know, they saw him in another light. Yeah. Now he wasn't just like that. Now they're like the girls that they cover it. That the, the ladies there were kind of like. Like, finally, you know, like, they were also hating on it, like, which goes back to that thing. Like, you know, why her? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's well, pretty, but why her? Smart. I'm prettier than her. Well, because she's smart. Yeah. I, I, to do I wear beauty. makeup. You know, I look pretty. She yeah. doesn't. Like, why? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so if they were thinking like that, it's because they started seeing, like, you know, you know what? He's come out of his cocoon. He stands up a little bit more straight. He's a little more confident. You know, yeah. he's muscular. They still probably start noticing, you know, he runs, he Rose, you know, it's like yeah. he's got a good physique, he's well maintenance, okay. like okay. so. So yeah, but definitely when I think when you're attracted to someone and you find people that you have things in common with and you can relate with, uh, like the beauty is on the inside, right? You start seeing the the beauty within and not the whole beauty outside. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ugly people in the world and they find a significant other, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's because somebody got to know them and saw how pretty they are love love I, their insight yeah i mean look at you and look <laughs> at me right you're probably like this guy is ugly like I, I i can do so much better than him i've done better than him no, you know and i'm over here I all excuse me man <laughs> Uh, oh, we are, dance, you, man. are you Igor? And then, are you Igor? Or and then something? I was doing, doing the the Jerry Lewis, like the Doctor Oh Doolittle yeah, the Doctor. Yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> and then you're like, oh yeah. And then you're like, oh, 
You know, he does have pretty eyes. Oh, what what beautiful lips. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I didn't know that that was hiding behind that shirt. Oh, excuse me. Oh, what, you what? mean when you were. You, when <laughs> That's you, not the point. We're not going we there. I'm just school? saying. Then you when realize. We school, and then all of a sudden yeah, you forgot I, about that. And you were I like. I remember he's a, what you look like. He's a beautiful school. person in the inside. I, wow. I have that picture of you in the military. We're not talking about that anymore. I'm just getting to the. You got past the layer. <laughs> Because onions have layers. Yes, I, I <laughs> Ogres am past, have layers. I am past the layers of onions, yes. <laughs> and you're and like... I still love you, yes. <laughs> yes. Let's see. So, yeah, there you go. Well, okay. Now, um, to close it off, we're getting towards the end of this now. I'm why, so hilarious. Why do you think that her TV show was so popular with women? Well, you know what? She, she automatically uh, related to them, right? Okay. She told them, like, hey... I know there's times when you feel unappreciated. Nobody takes time, you know, to think about you. And you've done this, you've done that, you've done this. And now you have to get dinner ready. And then you're going to kick it and they're just going to get up. And they're going to get the drinks while you're still, you know, cleaning up and washing dishes and everything. Like being a housewife, being a mother is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And so she's like straight out talk to people. She was kind of like, and it felt like she was breaking the fourth wall because the women were like, Yo, she's talking to me. Mm-hmm. She knows what I feel. She knows what I'm going through. And at that time, nobody did that, right? Because everything was male, male driven. Yeah. Everything was for men, right? Everything was, and even the producer talks about it. It was like, this is the hour where things are going to start getting interesting. So there's like, it's just like a dead zone. Nobody really watches during this time because, you know, the kids just ate and the husbands are getting ready to eat. They're getting home from work and they want to drink. So once they're done, having dinner and and drinking, then the man programming starts and the news start. Mm -hmm. But this is like a dead time, dead dead zone area. So this is kind of like either the wives are watching it or the kids are watching it. Mm -hmm. So let's just go for a risk and let's see, you know, let's do a cooking show. And, you know, the way she explained it and the passion behind it and then saying, yeah, we make mistakes. But what do we do with those mistakes? Right. You know. Yeah. There's always leftovers or, you know, we can, it's okay if it's a little crusty, you know, we'll make a note for the next time. We'll do the proper adjustments. So I think it caught women's point of view. Like, yeah, that's happened to me. I I burned that before. Or yeah, I don't feel appreciated at home by my husband and my kids. Mm -hmm. And so that, you so I do love them. Yeah. But when you can relate to someone and somebody's letting you know, and that's what made her a great host. Right. And then it was like, you know, children. What was that? That catchphrase of hers? Uh, oh, uh, please set the table. Your mom needs a minute. Yeah, something like that. Like when, what woman doesn't need that, right? Yeah. Like I've been cooking. I've been doing all this crap. The least you can do is set the table and let me have a moment by myself too. Yeah, to go to the bathroom finally. <sighs> yeah, to take that that <laughs> breath. You know, yeah. to take that that sip of that water that or you know. Yeah. Coffee that's all cold now, or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? The like, wine, the glass of yeah. wine that you've been. So I thought that drink. was cool. That was a catchphrase, yeah. and okay. uh, I think she did a great, uh, uh, like, like on the TV show and on it. It's just they say that she wasn't a, a people person, but you know, she she hit the right nerve to get their attention. Okay. Do you think that they understood that she was a chemist, like a true chemist? Or um, I know in the book club, I don't recall. So one of our book club members said that. They did say, she does say that she's a chemist, but I don't remember that. Do you remember if she says that? She does. She does? Okay. Yes, so she does. So then they do know that she's... Yeah, she. it's part of her introduction. Okay. So it's okay. part of her introduction. She she lets everybody know but what they... her background is. And then she says, and what is cooking? Nothing more than chemistry. Mm-hmm. The bringing together of different elements at a perfect a perfect temperature. Oh, oh my God. Perfect temperature. Yeah. Uh, and to cook it into the perfect time to allow it to become the perfect like uh, dish chemistry or, or yeah. dish, right? Okay. A combined thing. So it was like cooking is chemistry yeah. because you're taking different f- Chemical, ingredients, yeah. chemicals to create one thing, right? Yep. One one whole okay. atom or whatever okay. you want to call it. Okay. And and of course, the point of her being an atheist was not taken well. Oh, uh, during that era, yeah, most definitely. during that era. Do you, so. Uh, for and the, it comes up kind of rather nonchalantly, you know. It's just more like a oh, but no, I wouldn't know anything about that because I'm an atheist. And now, 
she didn't lose as many people as I think they thought she was going to lose. Oh, no, yeah. But uh, so, so maybe it could have been the beginning of people thinking like that. Or okay. it was just that they enjoyed like what she had to say. So much. So more. much that they were like, okay, so you're not perfect. So okay. you have an imperfection. Fine. But it was an important part of the book, right? Because even me, as I was going through, I was like, oh, shit, don't say it. And, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then the producers doing the same thing. It's like, oh, here we go. Yeah. You know, and it happens. And, and then you're of like, she's got hate because someone tries to blow up the place. Exactly. So that's where I was going. It was an important factor because it leads to like two chapters right there. You know, yeah. it's like of, of, of how 630 starts coming on set and it's starting to be a part of it because he's watching the TV at home with Matt and Harriet. And he's noticing that there's not that many people clapping or so many people clapping. Mm -hmm. And he starts seeing the common person over and over again who's out there scouting. So he's like, they're going to be back. I need to do something to protect her because I already failed with one master. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fail with my other parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then he, you know, and that was a, so it gave us that back. That's why that chapter with, with him, it was important with 630 because we already know how he thinks. You already know how he feels. So for him to be doing that later on, and yeah. we already have his background as a character. Yeah. So there's no questions about, like, how did he know there was a bomb? Yeah. How did he know what to do with yeah, the bomb? Yeah, because we knew he's no, a bomb dog. Exactly. We knew that already. So we got that introduction. We know we have that background on, on that mm -hmm. character yeah. that we're not shocked when that comes. It's just it's just a correlate. Same thing with the story. Okay. They told us, oh, he's a bomb dog. Blah, blah, blah. And then later on, this happens. It's like, oh, he's a hero. Or, hey, we know who did it. It wasn't the freaking security guard. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, know. you know, it was 630. Yeah. Of course it was 630. Yeah. You know, that's that, that's his background. That's my boy, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, All right. so yeah, I, I'm sorry. Where no, were we going with that question? Just, there was no, something. No, no, just. I was I, going somewhere else with it, but. I'm not sure where you were going with it because I asked, you know, I just I just commented on the fact that her being an atheist. Oh, yeah. No. So, well. so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So, yeah, I so I wasn't taking well, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then and during that era, most definitely, like, she should have. She should have been canceled. Like, you know, it was a, she like you think, canceled. yeah, you think like, oh, dude, that's it. It's over, you know, because the people were so religious. Religious would, was the only thing. And you didn't hear a lot of people saying they were atheists, especially openly like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But then at the same time, you're kind of like, like, but she's like, but look, we're getting more sponsors. Like, like they want to drop us. That's fine. We have so many other people online. Yeah. You know, they want to be a part of this because we're growing so much. We're doing something because it shows you the power of women, like how many women are in the world. Like yeah. they took them as like they don't matter. There's just a background thing. But now you're seeing by because of the popularity of the show and how it's growing, like how many women are out there that can relate to what's going on and what's being said. Yeah. Right. So that goes with that. So but yeah, um, I, I thought it was it was crazy. I was like, definitely thought of something bad was gonna. Oh, something bad did happen uh, about it. Do but. Do you think it was smart of her to have canceled the show and gone back to Hastings to be a scientist? Uh, yes. She's realizing that this is fun and I'm doing something for people. Mm -hmm. But it's not what. She but loves. it's not what I love, right? Yeah. It's not what makes me great, and it's, it's taking me away from my kid. It's taking me away from stuff, right? Yeah, I'm missing out on stuff. Like it's just too much. It's like I'm enjoying it, but it's not what I love. Yeah. Like, and how long can I do this? So, what better than go out on top like this? Yeah. Than everything, and okay. just go back to my true love, my true passion, right? And and luckily, that's where we meet. Calvin's yeah, mom. but it was crazy though, because I mean, I, I was like a place like that 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 was that that screwed her over in so many ways. Uh -huh. Like definitely, I was like, why the fuck would you go back there? But the thing that it was how it was brought up and how she was tricked to show up. Yeah. So that made that I'll excuse Ms. it. Ms. Frask is the one who called her. Yeah. So we didn't cover. I didn't. I didn't cover it. So we were talking about how Ms. Frask like was a horrible person and yes. shit and everything. But it wasn't a moment of them being women and finally talking it out and for, like putting out there why they disliked each other yeah. or why she just well, disliked her. her. Yeah, why she disliked her. And then she finally tells her, like, you don't understand me. I went through this, 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 this. And then she's like, shit, I went through it too. Yeah. I was going to be a psychologist and yeah. my professor also raped me. Yeah. So they were like, we were both. You know, taken advantage of by yeah. We were both studying a science that we wanted, and what we wanted yeah, to people be. that were supposed to be our mentors mm -hmm. uh, took advantage of us. So we have that in common. Yeah. So I've been mis 
treating you and judging you wrongly. Yeah. When I'm I'm you. Yeah. You know what I mean? The and, only and that's the thing. Uh, yeah. And I think a lot of women are like that. You know, like I'm we're all they're all part of each other in some way, shape or form. That's how they like to see Why each other. Sisters, right. Right. All right. Women are yeah. Sisters. <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah. So. 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 So, yeah, she knew what she went through. They became kind of like friends. They understood each other. And another Calvin connection, of yeah. course. And then, uh, yeah, she tricked her into showing up. Mm-hmm. And and then, of course, that's things lead to the end. Yep. And she meets the mom, and she, then and they mom. get rid of Mr. Denali or yeah. Doctor Denali, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. the the jerk, <laughs> the other the other misogynist in the story. That yeah, he's really yeah, he's a, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. he's taking, a piece of shit character. Taking credit for all her stuff, but yeah, robbed her from her work and mm-hmm. put his name on it and everything. Yeah, yeah. so so yeah, that was a. Uh, and say the end because yeah that that you realize and and I think her putting stuff together you get to meet Calvin's mom and yeah. the lawyer and everything comes back together and things get talked about and straightened out and yeah okay last question background. and do you think in the workplace because I know you have a lot, there's a lot of women in your work who are bosses do you think that the roles have reversed a little and and if so. Is it because of a woman's need to like prove herself? Oh yeah, no, oh, yeah. I, I I do feel that a lot of times, depending on the type of jobs that you do, um, women women will feel that right. They will feel that sometimes they're not being taken serious because because that because they're 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 a female, mm-hmm. and it happens, you know. Because so, you've had women bosses recently. Yeah, yeah, and great people. Like as a as per, as people as a, as a person, they're fine. I love them, yeah. you know. But sometimes as the bosses, there's a lot of a lot of questions, you know. But I understand. I understand why they have to be like that sometimes, you know. Uh, it's the environment. It's uh, something to prove. Okay. Um, I mean, there's lots of guys who do that to each other, right? The guys are can be just as petty, but for women in the workplace, you still feel because I work. In my office, I really can't say anything other than most of the people in my office are women. There's like mm-hmm. one guy, right? Mm-hmm. So um, now, are there other management that are men that come across badly often? Yes, there are. But <laughs> um, they're not people we deal with on a regular basis. So don't really worry about it. But in your p- job, I know you've got men and women bosses yeah i i think that maybe the women have to feel like that or, or be more like hard ass like that especially i think when they're having to deal with uh older men you know because okay. because uh, the mentality the mentality okay. yeah the way it was i mean you just can't beat that out of someone when it's a certain way yeah and i think also culturally culturally oh, yeah, wise, for sure. culturally it's uh, a big deal it's a it's another thing right mm-hmm. and especially like let's say i have my boss was a hispanic woman Mm-hmm. And uh, you know she knows how a Hispanic man can be, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty sure she there was a way why she talks to a Hispanic man the way she does, right? Yeah, you know like or why she keeps her distance from some sort of man, mm-hmm. right? Because she knows how they act, how they think, how they you know because she has men in her family. Yeah. Um. So yeah, definitely, I think you know it's different. The younger man, uh, it might be more simple or. You know, easier going. Yeah, but at the same time, sometimes it feels like bitchy. everybody. Yeah, somebody tries to be. People have to be sometimes a little bit more politically correct because yeah. I think as men, we also kind of have to skate on thin ice because we never know what could be said or or brought up against us, right? Yeah, even amongst each other. Yeah, so because yeah, all the younger men. Yeah, are... you know, because you know how some people say, uh, like I, I sometimes as a man, I I I worry about hearing like, oh, you you were being sexist. Or, you know, you're such a machista or, oh, you sexually harassed me or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just one, one, it, it just takes one thing. Yeah. One comment to, yeah. to put you in an awkward position. Yeah. Okay. So things, things maybe aren't as bad as they were, would you say? Oh yeah. No. Nah. Not as bad, maybe more awkward or is it worse? I don't know. I, it's I, different. It's, it's, it's a different, different worse. <laughs> Yeah, it's a different word. Or, or different the same. 
No, it's a different one. It, it, I think it's it just goes both ways. There's, there's so many other things going on before. In that time for the book, yeah, definitely. You know, in the fifties, yeah, women. I mean, come on, like, when did they start boating? You know, when yeah. did you know, like, when did they were allowed to you know start driving or do anything? It's like you know, I laugh about it. Like in in this in this point, not not that I'm laughing at the situation. Okay, let me clarify that. I'm laughing at it because I think about. I've been thinking about the book, right? And I remember you say you were gonna talk to your friends about it, and you guys did the recording and everything, and think about the show and everything. And I'm thinking about your questions, and this is where I'm laughing about. I was like, you know, maybe you guys should watch Mad Men. You know, like that really shows you, like how women were treated and how it was for them, right? Yeah. So, like, in another point of view of it, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it's definitely not like that anymore. Yeah. I always think about that. Like a lot of things, I was like, Mad, I mean, Mad for, Men was pretty most, accurate. For most women, it's not like that anymore. I'm sure that there's places in the world and even places within our own nation that yeah but know, even with it, with it the kids right i think what was it the very first episode of mat man they're having like a house party or something I some kids running around some kids running around and the guy just grabs them and slaps the shit out of them oh he says you stop that you're being a little shit you need to control your oh, yeah, emotions that would never happen right and <laughs> then the guy walks in he's like what happened he's like oh i'm sorry dude i had to smack your kid around because he's just being a little shit oh yeah you know boys will be boys you're like the fuck nobody's ever gonna slap my kid like that you, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. this how far we've come right we're yeah. talking about the 50s that was the 50s yeah, right? yeah yeah it's well i guess the mentality was it takes a village yeah and now it's like no your bubble is your bubble and nobody else needs to be in your bubble <laughs> so right yeah all right well thank you for having this conversation with me and giving us your point of view sorry i rambled on a little no no too you're much. fine i mean like it was a great book. I mean, honestly, I, I uh, surprisingly, I enjoyed it. Like, I, I saw the book. Like, I saw the, I'm sorry. I saw the show uh, with you, like I said, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I was interested because, you know. I think, I think seeing Larson. the show, yes. I think 50s. seeing the show interested you in the book. Because when I asked you if you wanted to hear the book, you were like, no, originally. And then you saw the show, and then you're like, oh, okay. All right, I guess I'll listen to it just to fill in those things that I had told you were different. Right, and then definitely it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, the the book is way better. Yeah, way better. I uh, definitely, I, I want to say on a scale of one to five, I give it a four point five, close okay. to a four point seven five. Okay, like it had good stuff, it had bad stuff. Um, like I said, I don't care for the rape stuff, but it had stuff that made me laugh. Um, I finished it, yeah, within a week, I want to say maybe. Yeah. Um, it was enjoyable. It was okay. interesting. I, I'm a father of of of, of, of girls. girls, and I got my two little beautiful angels, and and so uh, whatever kind of like helps me understand them later on in life and their point of views when they want to talk to me about something that happens. I don't think it'll be at that point, you know, like how women, how men at work treat them, or the jokes that they say or whatever. I mean, you um, would you would hope not. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you've already told me that, you know, if any guy ever messes with them, that their brothers will, <laughs> you, you and the boys will all be there to take yeah, care of Yeah, most definitely, <laughs> you know. I mean, I will turn into Tony Soprano most likely. <laughs> um, I will go to jail for I'm sorry. <laughs> the boys would just probably scare them. I, 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 I mm. You know how, uh, was it, Michael Yoda made that joke when, when his son was born and and uh, he he held him in his hands, and he was like, "You know, I, I would, I would die, uh, I would die for you, you know." Uh -huh. And then when his daughter was born, it's like, "I will kill for you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will die for you, and I will kill for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I again, I enjoyed the book. I found a lot of um, points about. Her personality was very relatable for me. Not her situation, not her life. Um, other than, you know, wanting to keep my last name uh, because, you know, for identity purposes and genealogy records and stuff like that. But I, I did enjoy the book, all of it. And yes, it reminded me of Bones, like I had said in my, uh, in the previous recording with my, my team, with my book club and anyways 
I, I thank you for your time. I appreciate your point of view as a male reader or listener of yeah. the story. No, it's definitely a girl's book. Like, definitely. I don't think a lot of guys would enjoy it. To I be don't honest. think so either. Yeah, I don't think a lot of guys would no. enjoy it. So, but, uh, but if they they have an open mind and, uh, and just go with it, yeah, it's not, it's not bad. What? It's, it's... Thank you for being a little bit of a feminist, babe. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not a feminist. I mean, let's get this <laughs> right. To clarify. Right, right. Let's clarify. Well, thank this. you for being a supportive husband. Yeah, yeah. There you, <laughs> there you go. go. I mean, but it was entertaining. It was a good book, and it, was, and it had good moments, and it had sad moments. It had everything on it. It had the angry moments. It had dumb moments. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it was not bad. Well, thank you again, and hopefully, if you made it this far, you have a great rest of your week. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks.